Welcome to LSC. It's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hens. Today I have Todd, Todd Summers with me. Todd is a former Hampton High School football player that was on a state championship in 89. Welcome. Glad to have you here today. Good day. Uh, first of all, I want to go back because when you started playing football, you played in rec league, but you didn't play for the same team. You kind of went around the, the, the different teams. Talk about yes, that sir. a little bit. Well, I'm um, actually... My mom, she stayed in one zone. My grandmother stayed in another zone. But my mom, um, she was sick all the time. So pretty much grandma's house was home base. Okay. So I did all of my rec league stuff through the Bethel zone. Um, played baseball through there at Mallory as well as um, football. I started off at Mallory and then I went on to Northampton. Right. And league. who were some of your coaches you was telling me about? Um, coach Incominius. Right. A great coach. That was my um, coach at Northampton. Miss him. Yeah, um, he tremendous was, uh, individual uh, helped coach Kyle's over there. Him and his both his sons. Yes, sir. He um, he was a he was a great example, you know, for us there, and I love him to death. Well, tell me about him coaching you. Evidently, must have gave you some tremendous uh, fundamentals. Oh, most certainly, Coach um, Incominius is pretty smart. Um, he taught you how to be intense, as well as learn the right thing to do. And, um, you know, they carry on, especially starting off as, you know, as your basis for your fundamentals. Right. And um, I just enjoy playing with him, learn how to be a champion there as well. Um, we did win a championship there, played with a lot of Bethel guys. Wow. Um, Boogie Wooten and So John. you got to, and then you ended up playing against them, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kent Johnson was my quarterback. Right. Um, a lot of them guys over there I played with, so. But you didn't do just play football. You also played baseball. Yeah, I played baseball. Um, and, and and hit against somebody we know who we had on this program. Oh, yeah. Um, Wayne Gomes. Against <laughs> Wayne Gomes. Got a chance to play against him. And a lot of good guys from the district that um, play baseball. The, um, now, of the two loves, evidently football was your greater love? Or no. just you just excelled in that? Or what? Actually, baseball is my greater love. Okay. Baseball is my first love, and it was my, um, my greater love, and I just loved it. But I guess I was a little bit more fortunate in football. Right. Well, what position you play in baseball? Baseball, I played um, up to up to I got to Pony League. Um, I started playing catcher. So all okay. the way through high school, I played catcher, played outfield. Okay. Um, I could play anywhere in the infield, pretty much. But okay. um, I mostly played catcher. My same year, I was a catcher, and um, I enjoy catching as well. Okay. Then you get through the rec league, and you go to Hampton High School. You go to JV's first. Yeah, I went to JV. Actually, I went to JV um, after Northampton in seventh grade. I went on out at, in eighth grade. Okay. Um, I expected to go to Bethel because uh, playing with them guys, I was thinking I was going to go to Bethel. And I had watched Hot Shot. I had watched them play at Bethel. And, and when I was coming through, um, Rodney Howard had took over. Right. And right when I was in eighth grade, Rodney would have been a senior at Bethel. So I expected, I was timing it from watching them I was like, yeah, they my we size. Stick right in. By the time Rodney graduates, I'm going to be in ninth grade at Bethel. By the time he graduates, so I'll be able to take over. But I decided to you know, go my mom's zone where I was really staying with. And um, I went on to Hampton, and um, I started to learn about Hampton and realized that was a great team over there right. as well. And I just, great tradition over yeah, there. Yeah, I just went where I was supposed to go. Who was your JV coach then? Um, coach Walter Brow was my. Walter coach. was, okay, because I know he, he did some football and basketball, basically basketball, but he was doing some football. Yeah, I think that was his first year coaching. Maybe, um, maybe not, but I played under Coach Walter Brow, and, you know, he's, he's a pretty good coach. And uh, I talked to him from time to time, but, yeah, he was my JV coach. Uh, then you went to the. To the varsity following year. Yeah. I actually, I was in, um, I was the only eighth grader in two days with the varsity my eighth grade year. I went on, I went wow. to two days. So, That's um, unusual. Yeah, so I was the only eighth grader in two days with Linwood Lumpkins and Leslie Bailey and Tim Barnes and Kevin Smith, big Kevin Smith, and a lot of those guys, the Porter Boys. And um, when I was up there with Coach Smith and Coach Mann, but I was only in eighth grade, so I could only play. You couldn't. You had to play in the JV. That's right. But as a ninth grader, you went up there, and you already knew what two a days was like because you'd already gone through it once. Most certainly. So that had to help you uh, in regards to the other kids coming up and hadn't gone through two a days. Most certainly. I definitely. Um, when I got there in ninth grade, I was pretty much um, aware of what was going to take place. Um, actually, only two ninth graders made the team that year. Uh, myself, as well as James Wilson. 
Right. And uh, we was the only two ninth graders that made the team my ninth grade year. We went 14-0 that year. Right. And we had a great season and, you know, good to learn up under those coaches we had. Who was the quarterback then? Um, that year, the quarterback was... Um, I'm sorry, put you on the spot. No, 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 that year, Tim Barnes was my eighth grade year. And then that year was... Um, uh, it was it was Eric Hunter, then it was it was D. Rocky Croom, and the year before that was. Um, Don't worry about I it. I can see him, but I can't, <laughs> I can't think of his name. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you had some good quarterbacks in there, D. Rock Croom yeah. and and Eric Hunter. I mean, that's just tremendous. And would you always wanted to be a running back? Always, always. You know, felt like I was born a back, <laughs> born with the ball in my hand. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, D. Rock, D. Rock, actually, my ninth grade year, he actually pitched me my first um, touchdown against um, Ferguson. How about that? And uh, my ninth grade year, and we went 14-0 that year, and D. Rock was my quarterback in tenth grade, and eleventh and twelfth grade, I had Eric Hunter. Yeah, and Eric ended up being uh, just a tremendous athlete, and that he was, he could put a team on his shoulder. I saw him do it in, in, in basketball. That he was, he didn't like to lose. Right. And. and could you feel that when you got in the huddle and he was calling the play? <laughs> you knew that he was going to execute you had better. Oh yeah, um, Eric was Eric was an awesome quarterback. He was pretty aggressive. Um, he took control. Right. Eric grew up in my neighborhood up on Bryfield Road. We all stayed in the same neighborhood. So actually, whenever we played pickup games in the neighborhood, Eric would wouldn't let anybody else be the quarterback. He would be the quarterback for both sides. I'm the all-time quarterback, and if he, <laughs> he didn't like it, he wanted to fight. But Eric was a great quarterback. Um, he was a great leader. He you know, was a good super athlete. He was tall. He could really throw the ball. And um, Yeah, he was, what, about 6'4", I believe. I mean, yeah, he was 6'5". 6'5". Eric was a true 6'5". Because I was talk, uh, had uh, uh, Kevin Swan in here. And he says, I was a captain on the team, but he said, everybody listen to Eric <laughs> on the basketball team. Exactly. He says, because Eric, they just knew he wanted to win. Yeah, exactly. Eric, um, Kevin Swan knew him as well. He was always next door to me, Swan, and Summers okay. at home base. So what was it like playing uh, for Mike Smith? I mean, legendary coach, number one. It's just unbelievable record that he has. But to, to, from a, uh, a kid's perspective, you come in, and you get to you get to meet the guy who is the coach. Yes, um, coming through Hampton High and um, not really knowing how legendary he was when I came in when I was about 12, 13, coming in, probably 13, coming in as an eighth grader, um, not really knowing how legendary he was. Um, he, he he was a great coach. He was a great man. You know, he, I remember the very first day I came and took a knee in front of him. He said, "If you're here because your uncle wants you here, your daddy wants you here." You know, your neighbors tell you you should be here, then go home. And, you know, you I only want you here because you want to be here. Yeah, good point. And, um, you know, I took, I really took, took, took grab a, a grasp of Coach Smith and everything. Great teacher. Um, great example of, of doing the right thing. I've always learned from him that there's only one way to do things, and that's the right way. Right. And, um, and I just love that about Coach Smith. I mean, he studies. He studies the game, and you know, and I think that's why people think he's. I think a lot of people look at him as very simplistic, but yeah. simple. He's not as simplistic as he as he as it seems. His, as, he makes you think he's simplistic, but he's not. Exactly, it seems simple what he's doing, but he puts so much time in, and he studied tendencies so well that um, that it, that it's just awesome. And I've always grabbed hold of that, and I've and I learned from that, and that's how I got to grow as far as a football player. Right. And then you graduate after you win the state championship, which is just unbelievable to, to win a state championship. But you graduate and then you go to HU, but you're, you're not on scholarship. That's right. Um, well, one of them things growing up you have to learn about. And I pretty much um, didn't realize how important education was. Um, I got put in advanced classes in, in junior high school. That was a, that's the story I want right yeah, there. I got, I got put in my um, academically advanced classes in high school call it AP class, advanced placement. And I really, I did, really didn't want that because my friends, all my friends that I ran with pretty much wasn't in those classes. So my thing was I want to get back in my regular classes and I don't want to, not going to do no work until I get in my regular classes. But um, as I grew up, I learned that, um, that you know, you need that. But at the time I didn't know. Right. Actually in high school I was ineligible my 10th grade year. 
Um, okay. And then I played back again my 11th grade year, and that's when I started realizing, hey, I think I want to do something more than, than you know, uh, just finish high school. Right. And a lot of people used to say, you going to college, you going to college. And I used to say, yeah, I'm going to college. But actually, I didn't really think about it until, um, actually, there was this program called Project Discovery. Right. And they took me on a college visit. And um, that's when I realized, hey, I really want to get to college. And, um, and, and it took a lot to realize that when you're young, you can't see everything. And you don't always, you know, your people well, can pound you, it in your head. Right, you don't have the full view. In right. Your, and I can understand that. But you're ineligible to first year, but you didn't just quit. Oh, no, 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 no. So I went to college, and I didn't, I didn't have a, a big two, uh, grade point average, so I pretty much snuck in the back door at Hampton University. <laughs> and I think it was pretty much because my family has a little legacy there. My mom went there, grandma went there, great-grandfather ran the barn there. And, okay. um, actually, my great-grandfather and great-grandmother is buried in that little plot over there that has about 50 people on the, wow. on the campus. So I think that's how I was able to sneak in the back door. But I got in this program, and uh, this program called Summer Bridge. And if you could pass the program um, with a B average above it, they allow you to, you know, to um, be admitted to the school. So once I got in there, I said, um, actually, Dr. Screen. Dr. Screen helped me fill out right. my application. He was a tennis coach, wasn't Yes, he was. Yeah. He, he was a great Hampton High fan, and I didn't realize that he was a friend of one of my uncles. He was a roommate of one of my uncles, my uncle who was a doctor as well, my local doctor, Dr. Lawrence Young. And um, he was a roommate of his in, in college, and um, he the one who helped me, helped me a lot. And I realized then that I, once I got in, I said, I'm not leaving out of here until I get my degree. <laughs> so, well, good for you. Because you got a scholarship your second year. Your yes. sophomore year, they got the full scholarship, so you played, played football. Yes, sir. I was eligible my first year. They didn't even recruit me there. But um, once they realized I was there um, and I wanted to play my second year, they went ahead and gave me a scholarship. And I just took full advantage of that. And um, when I ran with I made the dean's list a few times. Um, I, I really enjoyed myself in college, and college mm -hmm. is the best experience Huge. ever in the world, you yeah. know, so I was glad the opportunity came about and I took advantage of it. All right, now we're going to talk about your kids, because you got a thing going with your kids, which I just think is unbelievable, and it's great. Tell us about that. Well, with my kids, I pretty much, um, with the experience that I had of not taking advantage of being in advanced placement classes and not knowing the importance of that, um, when I was in college, there was a gentleman that came to school. Um, his name was Tim Benson. And Tim Benson came from a school um, in Missouri, Jefferson City, Missouri. Right. And they used to be in the standings um, in the top 25 with Hampton High, so I used to watch them. And so when he came to the school and said he was from Jefferson City, you know, I took, you know, took a little... Took I, notice of him. Yeah, took notice of him. This guy from Jefferson City. One day in practice, he was a freshman, and he came in the... Um, Came to practice with no uniform on, and he came to coach, coach, coach Taylor. Taylor yeah. And uh, this is like he was a couple years behind me. He came in and he told Coach Taylor he wasn't gonna practice today. And uh, Coach Taylor, oh, hey, oh, you know, Coach Taylor, look, uh, <laughs> you ain't gonna practice, you ain't gonna play, you know. So he was okay, you know. I got a B on my test, and we we looked, we laughed a little bit. Said this guy crazy, he got a B, and told me he's not gonna practice, but he said he need to go work on that B he had. He want to work on getting that up. And I learned from that, that that guy, a few years later, when I got to watch him every day at halftime for the next three years, every, every game at halftime, he won an academic play of the game from whoever was giving it away, whoever was sponsoring our game, or sometimes sponsored on ABC. You know, he, at halftime, he shake a hand with the president of the school and the representative from and whatever company check. was and getting the chuck. 10,000 in his name, 5,000, you know, 10,000 for the school um, academic scholarship fund, and then he's getting maybe 5,000 or 2,000 for his fellowship. Um, in the future, he graduated with a 4.0 and $189,000 in, in fellowship money. <laughs> 189,000 in fellowship money. Of course. And, and uh, where'd he go? And he went, he went to, and a full ride to John Hopkins University. A full ride. So, of course, you know what we call him. What do you call him now? <laughs> Dr. Benson. <laughs> so I, I, I really, I, I took that, and I, I got the chance to watch that, and, I, and that stuck with me. And I said, I'm going to always teach my kids. I'm going to teach my kids the A-track, A-track, A-track. So right now with my kids, I have a, uh, 
have a little thing going on. Every nine weeks we have a competition. Whoever get all A's, they can get the grand prize. So, um, you know, they, they get all A's. And like this past nine weeks, my fourth grader, um, Deity Summers, he, he got all A's. And um, my, my second grader, she got all A's, one B. My seventh grader, she got all A's and, and two B's. And my, my, my one in 11th grader over at Phoebus, Deshaun, he didn't, he didn't get all A's. He got a few A's, a few B's, and I think a C. And, um, but my fourth grader won, so I had to go out and buy him a skateboard. Skateboard. And we're not talking just a run-of-the-mill skateboard. I didn't realize how, how much them skateboards <laughs> cost. But they, they cost me quite a bit, and I learned a lot about skateboard between now and back when I used to but ride the skateboard. he did his research. He, on the skateboards, didn't he? He knew his research. He knew the brands, and uh, he got me. But hey, anything for the LA. So you know, and we stick with that. That's a habit they have right now, and I want that to carry on for them because I teach them that you know those A's is going to create a million doors of opportunity for you. A means ac academic, means all American. All American, and this all American city, you know. Yeah. And um, and I let them know that I'm all American out there in the 82nd, and um. And you know, and they can be all Americans, and they they look up to certain athletes. And my, like my baby girl, Destiny, she's in second grade. Her favorite two players in football is Tyrod Taylor and uh, Randy Moss, <laughs> and um, she loved them. And, and they all they all doing pretty good. So right. I just encourage them to keep doing that. One well, last few things I want to talk to you about. Thirty nine years of age, and you go join the army. Airborne, not just. <laughs> Normal. I mean, you go to the elite that's not special forces, but I mean, you've got to be in some kind of shape to get through and become airborne, 82nd. Yes, sir. My granddad was um, 82nd Airborne, 18 years out at Fort Bragg, and um, I wanted to go join the Army. And one reason was because I realized that uh, well, I wanted to go to the Army always coming out of high school, but I ended up coaching first. But um, so I thought it would be a great time losing cutting positions when I was in the school system. I was a counselor over at Lindsay. And then the positions got cut, so I decided, let me go and try some things that I've been wanting to do. Wow. So I went out and took advantage of that. And you know, when I decided to go airborne, they couldn't believe it. The sergeant was like, <laughs> hey, you sure you want to go airborne? You know, but it's, it's tough. And it's, it's a great, it's great. I want to serve my country. But you've been around athletes, and you know how to get in shape. And you coached. You went, when you graduated, you went over and, and helped uh, coach at Hampton, uh, Hampton High School, and at H and at HU. So you know the the meaning and the need to be in shape. So you know how That's to get it. in shape. So this was to your advantage. You just not a guy off the street decides he's going to be airborne. That didn't yes, happen. Sir. Yeah. Was... If if you could talk to the the kids out there and tell them you made a change at 39 years of age. A lot of people can't do that. Oh, afraid to do that, I should right. say. Right, but well, sometimes, you know, you got you to gotta step out there, and, you know, you can't be afraid to do what you feel you need to do. And um, I pretty much decided at 39 I wanted to start over and um, leave what I was comfortable with, leave the area that I was comfortable with, and go out and try something. Um, I knew that being in shape was something I did pretty much all my life right. as an athlete and taught, but, um, you know, going into the Army and, and having to stay physically fit <laughs> all the time was... Running four or five miles a day, you know, is tough, but it's, it's easy. It becomes a habit, you know. Humans are habit of repetition. What we do over and over again becomes a habit. So if we, we practice positive things, you can do it. Well, I want to tell you, you're a tremendous inspiration. Thank you and very you much. you got a great story, and you still got a lot ahead of you. A lot ahead of yes, you. Yes, sir. We want to thank you for tuning in to LSC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest, Todd Summers, for his candor. I'm Bob Hintz. Until next time.